So I was like, man, this guy's friggin' gonna scam me after he hired me to keep him from getting scammed. I have a side gig, which I usually enjoy, of doing Porsche consulting. And often that involves going to look at cars for people. I am not a mechanic, but sometimes, given my specialized knowledge, I can do better inspections than your average Porsche dealer inspection. So uh, I get sent to some interesting places and meet some interesting people. Somebody found me online. I think it was actually Rob Pitts sent him to me. So I made sure to thank Rob profusely after this, and you'll find out why. Matthew Birmingham from East Coast was a referral and he was looking at this car in my neck of the woods in Canton, Ohio. And it was a 80s 911 Targa. And the guy was asking 60 grand for it, which is at the time a pretty hefty price tag. So he wanted me to go look at it and advise on the car. And he said, just so you know, this guy is a, a real trip. Like he's got a huge ego. He's been talking down to me. He said lines such as like, well, do you have enough money to buy the car? And he's like, yeah, I do. That's why I'm inquiring about it. And so Matt told him a couple of the cars that he had. He tells him that he's going to send me out to inspect the car. And the seller goes, well, I've probably forgotten more about Porsches than this guy knows. Like, who, who is he again? And just basically being condescending to everybody stating that he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I had recently gotten this beautiful 2017 S63 on trade. It was the perfect car to be driven around in. And knowing this guy's ego, I was this close to having somebody drive me down and sit in the back seat and essentially play as my hired driver just to mess with this guy's head. But I didn't. I drove it myself in the interest of time. So <laughs> anyway, I, I pulled up in the S63 and I think that put him off his game a little bit because he's like, whoa, that's a that's a $200,000 car. What are you doing driving that? I'm like, well, it's not 200K today, but yeah, yeah, it is. $200,000 car. <laughs> so I'm trying to be as pleasant as possible because my kind of tack with people that have massive egos is like, okay, we'll just let them be right. I'm here to do a job to inspect a car and he can say whatever he wants. I'm just going to look over the car and do my job. So I start looking it over and he's hovering and talking at the same time, which is annoying as all get out to me. I just, I want to look at the car and I want to pick it apart without him asking what I'm doing. But it is his car, so whatever, his right to do that. So he's dropping all these lines and saying how big of a deal he is while I'm doing this inspection. He tells me that he's a Concord judge because he's kind of asking my qualifications. And I'm just like, I, I just know cars. He's like, well, I'm a Concord judge. I was like, oh, cool, do you do Porsche Parade? Oh no, well, I don't have time for that. I do Hershey and Cavallino. I was like, okay, well, those aren't Porsche events, but okay, cool. I'm like, isn't Cavallino a Ferrari thing? He's like, oh yeah, well, I'm, I'm certified by Porsche, Lamborghini, and Ferrari. I was like, oh, really? Like, where do you get this certification? Is that like the same website that you get ordained to be a minister? I didn't actually ask him that, but that's what I'm thinking, you know? That's my response in my head. So he just keeps dropping all these lines and talking about how much he did to this car to make it nice, but it is properly awful. I mean, I could have done the inspection in five minutes and walked away and just told the guy, hey, don't buy the car, but I was being paid by the hour and the entertainment was free and very... <laughs> very much worth it. So I stuck it out. So I'm going over the car, putting a paint meter on it, taking notes on everything. He told me that the, the odometer didn't work because he had removed it to fix it, but he didn't hook it back up because there was two diodes and he didn't want to cause a short. Okay. That's an interesting excuse for having an inoperative odometer. That's <laughs> One I've not heard before. And then there's like trim pieces falling off. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, I, did, I didn't put that one back on because I wanted you to see what I did to repair it. I was like, that's also a new one. You also didn't repaint and fix the dents and scratches because you wanted me to know what it looked like before they were fixed. The car was really, really rough. I pointed out a few things, but again, it wasn't my job to rip his car apart in front of him. My job was to report back to the buyer and tell him. And I just 
usually hope that the seller, as I'm doing these inspections, isn't like, oh, what are you going to tell the, what are you going to tell the buyer? But if they do ask what I'm looking at, I tell them in as kind a way as, as I possibly can, just explain to them what's good and what's bad, if they want to know. He also kept just dropping names the whole time, right? So he said that he had helped Bruce Canuck and Ralph Lauren with a 959 research project. Now, I knew he was talking about Bruce Canepa, but he didn't. And I was like, oh, really? A 959 research project. And ironically, I was wearing John Ficarra's t-shirt at the time. I was like, do you know John Ficarra? No, 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 I don't. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was the one that did the 959 research project for Bruce Canepa when, when he worked for them. That's not you, but okay. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Wrong name to drop. Then he said that the reason he had the car was from Jay Leno. Somebody had offered the car to Jay Leno, but Jay Leno had passed on it. No kidding. But he had like called this guy Joe and said, well, maybe you want this car. I'm like, man, you are just name dropping everybody. I'm sure Jay Leno involves himself in brokering ratty 911 Targas. That's, that's his thing. He then claimed that it was numbers matching. I was like, oh, great, cool. Did you get a Porsche certificate of authenticity to verify that, that I can check? Oh no, I just, I called my buddy. He's a Porsche vice president of something or other. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you have that buddy. All right, no verification of what you're claiming, but you have a buddy. Anyway, I finished my inspection and I was like, hey, what, what other cars do you have? So he had a 997 and a 996. And he kept telling me about this 996 Carrera 4S lightweight that he had. And I was like, oh, really, a lightweight? What is that? He's like, oh, it's basically a turbo car, but minus the turbos. I was like, so it's a Metzger engine? Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I wasn't aware of this, but you know when you're around people and they state things so definitively that you just start to second guess yourself, even though what they're saying is completely asinine and you're just like, well, no, I must be the one that's confused and wrong because there are some crazy things that Porsche's made that nobody's ever heard about. And I'm learning about those all the time. 993 turbo cabriolets, they made a few of those. Who would know, but they made them. So I'm like, maybe it's plausible that this was a thing, but I don't think so. So he takes me inside and shows me his Carrera 4S Lightweight. And it's really cool. It's white over terracotta, but it's no lightweight. It's just a C4S. It does not have a Metzger engine. And I was like, well, what makes it a lightweight? He goes, oh, it's aluminum fenders. It's like, really? I knew this was not the case, but I had literally just put my paint meter on the car because he had asked me if I wanted to buy it. So I was like, all right, sure. I like the spec. I'll take a gander at it, and my paint meter will show ferrous versus non-ferrous metals. And one is steel, other is aluminum. But all of the body panels on the C4S were steel, and I literally had the proof in my hands. But again, I was not there to debunk all of this guy's lies and make an enemy. I was there to just shut up and report back to the seller. And like I told Sabo, I'm the kind of guy who will be nice to your face and troll the crap out of you online. So I'm taking mental notes the whole time with this guy to just be like, all right, someday he's going to get roasted. So he called it the C4S. He said, I have a rare one of 20 turbo delete 996 C4S with the lightweight fenders. And then later he called it a super light. I had called a couple other people about this guy. And they said the same thing, like, yeah, he's come to a few events and bragged about all the cars he has and rare stuff and people he knows, but he's just a pompous person. And none of those cars he bragged about having have ever materialized. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I report back, sent him photos, all this stuff. And I'm like, listen, this guy's asking the moon. It's not a good car. It's probably a $30,000 car. And sure enough, I ran a title search and found out that he had purchased it for 20 or 25 grand and had actually noted the condition at the time they purchased it as fair. So they have like good, fair, poor, wrecked. And I was like, nobody does that. They're all good condition, but like he even knew this wasn't a good car, but he was trying to double his money on it. I'm like, this guy's totally trying to scam you. Like just, just walk away. Matt was like, well, can you find me a better one? I was like, yeah, easy. 
no problem at all. So I had sent him a few other options, and meanwhile I sent him my invoice for services, which was I think 700 bucks because there was travel time, et cetera, et cetera. And I had told him it would be in that range, and he's like, that's fine, a thousand bucks, whatever, it's no big deal to make sure I either get the right car or don't get the wrong car. A few days go by, no payment. So I was like, hey man, can you, uh, can you send that over? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot or whatever. I'll, I'll shoot that over today. No payment. It's like, hey man, are you paying this invoice? Like, you said you were gonna pay it yesterday. And I think the third time I reminded him, he said, okay, yep, yep, I'll do it right now. Didn't pay. So I was like, man, this guy's friggin' gonna scam me after he hired me to keep him from getting scammed. So I tried emailing him and crazy thing is his dad had emailed me in all of this and just said, hey, thank you very much for helping out my son. Like, you know, he told me you're helping him out. This is great. So I had like a little extra feel good thing about it, but I deleted that email. So I couldn't email his dad. So I like searched this guy, tried to find more phone numbers for him, phone numbers for his dad, whatever. They were disconnected. His email address that he had sent me email from, I went to the domain. It was a nothing domain. You know, it was like Lakeshore Engineering or something like that. It was nothing. He freaking hired me to make sure he didn't get scammed. That is a first. Now, it was absolutely worth it for the entertainment, but I still took a half day out of my schedule that I could have been doing something else making money. So I don't, uh, I don't get paid for, for good stories or for entertainment, but it was a fun experience nonetheless, and I guess worth 700 bucks, but would have been nicer to get paid. Are you looking for the perfect gift for yourself or the automotive enthusiast in your life this holiday season? Well, look no further than Celebrity Machines. They make metal stamped, screen accurate replicas of the license plates that you'll see on the cars and the movies and television shows that you love. They've got almost every one you could possibly imagine. And in fact, if you've gotten one of our Car Trek license plates or the Japanese license plate from my Lamborghini Diablo SV, those were also from Travis. So you may already have some Celebrity Machines license plates hanging up in your garage or in the background of your Zoom calls. But regardless, check them out now. If you go to the link in the description below or use the code VINWIKI at checkout, they're going to give you 20% off of your order. So check them out now, get some great gifts, and thank them for their support of VINWIKI.